Morning, Christ Lutheran Church. Um, here for another rambling with you. Uh, missed last week. Apologize for that. A few things had come up and had to take care of and all that good stuff that comes with the busy Christmas season. Uh, but a little bit of time I want to set aside today to kind of hit on some topics, something that's kind of you know, floating around in my mind. Uh, if, you've, if you've been reading the, the book of Job with us, we'll hit on a little bit of that with our reading through the Bible in a year, which, hey, there's still some time to get involved with that. Uh, keep up at it. Uh, reading the scriptures because we're in Job this week. Uh, some other things that kind of hit up, come up in the life of the church. If you were at Bible class a few weeks ago, we hit on this as well. Um, and kind of the, perhaps the reason for that, for this rambling today, is part of the job as, as pastor is you say something or, or you preach on a topic and you think, okay, I've said it, people get it, we can move on. Um, but I, I love, this is a quote from Luther. He will say this, that I need to hear the gospel every day because I forget the gospel every day. And this is so true. Um, and we'll, we'll dig into that here in a second of what I'm, I'm getting at. But ultimately, today's topic is how do you know you're good with God? If, you know, if, if people who are on their deathbeds, you know, a lot of times they'll have this question as they start getting towards the end or someone who's really sick or someone who has like this sudden, you know, close encounter with death, brush with death, and it just kind of wakes them up, or people who are just going about your day-to-day -day life, how do you know that you're good with God? Um, how, how can you be sure? Um, usually what we do is we tie it to something that we do, right? Or some, some behavior that I've done. Uh, but think about this kind of example kind of set ahead of us here. How, how is this, why is this pen good with me? Uh, why do I bother keeping this pen around? Um, well, if you stop to think about it, I keep it around because it works, right? When I sit down and I write something with this pen, it writes, it actually has ink in it and it works. It's justified. It's made right before me. It has a re it's justified. It has a reason for its existence, right? Uh, the moment that this thing doesn't work, what do you do? You chuck it, right? It, it throw it away. It's done. Its purpose is ended. It's no longer justified. It's no longer made right before you. It no longer has a right standing with you. Um, and so things like that. So with God, how do you know you have a right standing with him? How do you know you're justified? You know, this is a question of the scriptures. It's the question that the Reformation had, especially Luther, as he's working out things. Uh, how does he know that he has a God who loves him? How, how can he be sure when he's so clouded with sin uh, and things like this? Uh, what do you do? How, do you, how would you respond to that question? How do you know that you're good with God? Um, uh, what a lot of people, I think, what they'll probably say is, well, I do something, right? I, 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 func I work. Um, I do works. Or, or they'll, they'll say something like that. Or you know, even pious works. I, I do good things. I pray. I, uh, you know, a list of, you know, can list the pious things out here. Um, one of the things that kind of brought this to mind, we've been reading Job, and I love this. This is Job chapter 25, verse 4. And this is Bildad talking here, one of Job's friends. And uh, with Job's friends, you have to be careful because they're speaking on behalf of what um, you read about them. So you have uh, verse 4, Bildad says this, because it is a good question. Uh, How then can man be made right before God? How can he who is born of woman be pure? Um, and this, the, the friends are presenting to Job, how can any of us be clean? Uh, how can any of us be in the right before God? Um, how do you know, you know, how, can, how do you function? Uh, look at home, how do your appliances work? When you're making cookies in the oven, uh, how do you know that your oven's working, right? That it's being justified. It actually cooks the cookies. Um, your fridge works, right? It's justified. You keep the fridge around because it's working. Uh, so it's justified before you. It's, it's reason it has a reason for why it's here. Um, how do you know? Um, it's, it's not based on, we always will do it based on performance. Um, when I sit down and ask this question of confirmation students or I'll do a new member stuff, uh, it, I always hear, or if I preach about it, I'll, I, I'll preach on the topic and then like the next day I'll hear someone that just will say something else to me. Oh man, we always need to hear this, uh, that you are made righteous before God through Jesus Christ. So the reason that you are, you know, have a right standing before God is not based on what you do. Um, it is based on what God has done for you. God himself justifies you in his sight. Um, and, and it works well. There's a great book. So I have it here with me. Um, it's The Hammer of God. I'm going to pull it out here. 
Um, this is a really good book. If, if you have an opportunity to read it, it's, uh, it's by a, Bogertz. Um, it's a sweet, he's a, um, a kind of a Swedish Lutheran here. And uh, he was a bishop. And he, he writes on a topic here about someone who's trying to talk about how they're made good before God, what makes them righteous. Um, and he's thinking, you know, I got to give my heart to God. I got to give my heart to Jesus. And the guy goes, responds back to him and says, well, is that anything good? Is, is God want, you know, want that? Is that anything good that God's getting uh, when it's so plagued down with sin? And he, the man's struggling. He's like, well, then how, how can I be certain of my salvation? And he's like, you know, God is like a man walking through a field who comes across an old busted tin can. You know, it has holes in it. It doesn't hold water anymore. It's good for nothing. But the man decides to take his walking stick and plunge it through uh, the broken tin can, and he takes it home with him, right, so that it's his. That's what it means to be justified and made right before God, that God just chooses. Um, this is what makes pious salvation a little bit scary when people will reject um, salvation in Jesus Christ. Uh, is because it's, it leaves it out of their control, out of my control, that I don't have a say in being made right before God, that I'm a busted pen, and God would be right to take throw me out, but he keeps keeps me. And in, in fact, he fixes me up in Jesus Christ too. Um, there is that part to it. But I don't have a choice in the matter. It, it's all in God's hands, which leaves it out of my hands. Um, and this is why people, when I ask the question, or people are you know, responding, or you're thinking about this, how am I made right before God? We will always respond to something with the law. Uh, so we'll look and say, I am made right before God because I, I pray. I am made right before God because I come to church. Or I, I am made right before God because I take care of people. Or I do good deeds or, or things like this, which are all wonderful, good things to do. But these are not what makes you right before God. Because you could do all these things and God could still say, I never knew you. Um, be gone. Right? You read those parables of Jesus in the last few weeks of the church year. You read them during Holy Week. Uh, and things like that. And uh, it, it all kind of comes to this, this head of how you're made right before God. Um, and it's ultimately by what he's doing, what, what he's providing, that he's the one that knows you, right? You know God, but more importantly, he knows you. Because right? that's one of the questions in the parable when the people come before Jesus, uh, that Jesus says is um, he, he knows them. Uh, and like, well, you taught in our streets. So we saw you heal people. You, you did this. And he's like, I don't know you. Right, uh, it's sure you can know God, but does He know you? Uh, and this is what makes you know the work then that God does in church in the service. We just had two baptisms this weekend. Uh, the Lord's Supper is that here is how God knows you, uh, that you're made right before God, um, and that's what salvation is all about: is being made right before God. That something is in right standing before you, and everyone seeks this. Everyone wants this in life. Um, this is another a book here. I'll kind of put out here. It's uh, The Courage to be Protestant. Um, it is David Wells. He writes this. He's a Calvinist. Uh, so it gets kind of wonky, especially when it comes to the sacraments and the church and other things that we would kind of get on with them about. But he has a really good section in here about um, kind of where people find their rightness before God, uh, that they're made right before the world and before God. Because we do this everywhere. At work, when you go to work, right, the boss says, hey, I have to choose three people to lay off um, how is he going to make his decision? Well, he's going to, who's the most productive people here? Who are, who is the most justified to keep around? Um, you know, so what we do, we base on performance and, and we find this in our world too, with who we are identity wise. Uh, this is all a matter of salvation. Uh, and he's kind of, he's right to notice this. And he writes this, um, this is on page 25 here. Um, the idea of salvation has for us migrated out of the religious world and into the therapeutic world. There, the understanding of salvation has been transformed. It's no longer about a right standing before God. Now it's about right standing with ourselves. Right? I got to be true to me. I have my truth. I have um, whatever, you know, how people individualize society that we are. This is about salvation. Um, now it is about right standing with ourselves. This is what salvation is about. Now it is about self-fulfillment, self-esteem, self-realization, self-expression. And notice how limited these are because now we have to make all these laws that limit expression and things like that because we realize just how nothing's permitted when there is no God. Um, and this has happened at the exact same time that social media has entered our private worlds. And there the new media and this modern understanding of salvation have entered into an unholy union with each other. 
The point about social media like Facebook and the blogosphere is that they are vehicles for self-generated material, as I have this right now. Uh, and much of that material is also about the self. But these solitary migratory selves also coalesce into virtual communities. However, it is an illusion to think that these communities are real because no lives actually intersect. There is no shared challenges or shared responsibilities. Actually, there are not even faces to be seen except sometimes by way of photos. There is just shared information between solitary cells. And this is actually just stuff you want to share about yourself anyway, right? You can make who you are online. Um, here, anyone can be known to the whole world by the latest thought that has just crossed their mind, no matter how false or banal it may be. Those who inhabit social media day in and day out, who exist in a, this parallel universe, are obviously finding a reward. So the reason why when you get a notification and it seems rewarding uh, to you, there's a reward involved with social media. Right? It releases the endorphins in your head um, here, the, the feel goods. Um, this reward is not financial. So you're not getting a financial reward from social media or anything like this or your self-expressions or your search for identity and things like that. Uh, so he goes on to say this. So what is it? What's the reward you're finding? It is salvation. It's all about finding right standing with ourselves. And this is a very different form of salvation than the scriptures speak of salvation. Um, the, the form of salvation out there in the world is to, right, you put something out there on Facebook and people love it and they agree with it. And, right, and you feel good about yourself, right? You're justified in your opinion. You're justified in what you've done. Uh, you're justified in this or that and any other thing. And, and what you do when someone disagrees is that you either block them or silence them or unfriend them. Uh, you, they're not justified, so you toss them, right? Um, they're not justified in your sight. I gotta pick up my pen now, all right? Uh, this is what it all, all is about. Life is about salvation. Everyone seeks to be justified. Everyone seeks to be made right. And we always will do it in our world, especially social media. We do it by posting stuff about ourselves. We make our, we make ourselves, we're self-made men uh, and social media helps us with that. Um, we can do this with our performance at work and everything. Like this. And in the world, this is the right way to go about it, right? When the wife asked me to do something, I'll do it. I would be justified in her life, made righteous before my wife when she tells me to take out the trash or make sure this job is done. Um, and I'll do it out of love. Uh, and then we try to do the same thing to God though. That's the problem. Uh, we try to say, okay, well, before God, then here's why you keep me around God. I'm, a, I'm really active in the community. I do a lot of good things for people. Um, you know, I, I work when, when you tell me to. Uh, that's why you should keep me around. All right? It's all of a sudden back on me that I need to make myself right before God. And this is impossible because the question becomes, have you done enough? Have you prayed well enough? Maybe God didn't bother to hear your prayers, right? Uh, you, can, you can go all about this. Maybe God didn't want to hear it. Uh, maybe he prayed wrongly. Uh, this is why the disciples come up to Jesus and say, Lord, teach us to pray, right? They recognize maybe God has not wanted to hear my prayer, so I need to be taught. Prayer is something that needs to be taught. And so Jesus tells them the Lord's prayer. He's, you want to learn how to pray? Here's how you pray, uh, right? So even to be able to pray rightly, God has to do it for us, to us, uh, that we join with Jesus, uh, so justification for the Christian then is outside of us. To be saved is something that happens outside of us. It's not something that I can generate or I can do. It is something that Jesus does himself and gives to me. Uh, it's a foreign right, right in Christian theology is called an alien righteousness, right? My standing before God, my righteousness before him does not come from me. Uh, it comes from him, that he's the one who it comes from, that it's generated from him. Um, that I'm the one that's made righteous through his work. Um, so this puts in, uh, you know, all the kind of burden on Christ. Uh, he's the one that accomplishes it. By the Holy Spirit, it's given to you. Um, yeah, our Old Testament reading coming up this week is Isaiah chapter 61. And I love the, or 64, I should say. And it's the the spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim good news to captives, to release you know, the year of Jubilee, that the sick are going to be healed and things like that. That um, you know, the, dead, the dead people can't raise themselves. That it has to be done outside of them. People who are sick has to be done, healed outside of them. You know, as we get talking about vaccines be released here for COVID, right? The solution is not in you. It, it just isn't. Uh, to talk about a perfect uh, comparison here. The solution to COVID is not in you, right? It has to be kind of done from outside of you in terms of a vaccine and whatnot. Um, 
So yeah, salvation is something that happens outside of you. It's done in Christ, now given to you. Uh, this is when we come to the sacraments. How do you know then this, that this has made, been made right, that this has happened to you, right? Because then if you're left with that, you're still going to say, well, I'm right before God because I pray or I, I come to church or uh, I do good things and, and whatnot. Um, where, how do you know that God has made himself right with you? Well, he'll tell you. He has to tell you himself that he's done this. And this happens in the absolution and the church service. Right? You confess your sins. You just, con- just confess that you're not justified. You don't work. You're a sinner. Right? And then God says, forgiven. You belong to me. Right? He takes you. He doesn't chuck you. He keeps you. Forgives you. Uh, keeps you around. Right? You're justified because he decides that. Um, and then through the blood of Christ. And how do you know this has happened to you too? Well, water runs down your head. In the name of the triune God, you're mine. Right? You come up to the table when you come up to the table for the sacrament, right, it's, you know, take, eat, take, drink, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given for you. It's God saying things between you and me are good, right? And you can take and say, amen, they are, right? You've made, God has justified you before him through his work. Uh, this is something that cannot happen in the world, right? You can't pray it to happen. The answer to the prayer is to come here and receive it um, with the body of Christ, uh, the answer to these, you know, going out in the wilderness, sure, go ahead and you can pray and read your Bible anywhere. But guess what? That proclamation that happens to you only happens when Jesus himself declares it so amidst his people with the absolution, with baptism, with the Lord's Supper. Um, yeah, it continues to happen. So when you look at Bildad's question, how then can man be made right before God? How do you know that you're in a right standing before him? Well, Jesus does this himself. That's the good news. Um, for those who have a lot of good works, that's always terrifying, right? That they don't count. That they do before the world, your neighbor needs it done, but God himself will passively make you righteous before him um, through faith in Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so there you go. There's a little bit of wanderings today, a little bit shorter, uh, but we can always give thanks to God then for the work of Jesus Christ, that this happens still today, that this is the job of the church is to go out and say, Christ has chosen you. Christ does this to you. And that, that's the, the I to you language of the gospel, because the gospel is not secondhand. Uh, the gospel cannot be talking about the love of Jesus Christ or anything. It has, the love of Jesus Christ has to happen to you, um, has to be given to you. Uh, and this is why, you know, for us as Lutherans, especially as we see in the scriptures, this happens in the midst when the people of God gather to hear his word, right? The Holy Spirit moves through the word. Uh, and accomplishes this in our midst. Uh, what good news then that God has for us that this happens to us again today. And it happens to you. So go with that peace, knowing that your Lord loves you, that he gives this to you, not just talking about or secondhand. Uh, he, he's made you right before him because of Jesus Christ. Uh, so go in that peace and that knowledge. God's uh, mercy to you, especially as we continue. We'll say a prayer here and I'll give you a blessing. Uh, but go in peace with that knowledge of your Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, who has made us righteous before you, who has made us uh, justified, who has cleaned us up, who has given us salvation by his blood, uh, that he has redeemed for us, you, that he has purchased us with his holy blood uh, and given us to you. Lord, help us as your people to grow into works of love and charity and service uh, for the benef- betterment of this world, for its people. Uh, Lord, with everything going on in our world, we ask for your blessing and guidance, for wisdom and strength, for courage and faith uh, in you, that we would be found in you on that day. Lord, help your kingdom continue to come to us and expand. We ask this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, Christ Lutheran. Fun to ramble with you today. Take care. I look forward to seeing you all soon. (laughs) Bye.